I'm Coach Jordan Davis, and I got next. You next up, and you ain't been on sports like talk. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, you better hit him up. Look, you breaking it, and you up next. Keep the wins go hard. Rock the star on the big scene. Make them know who you are. You don't break a sweat. Don't set up for less. They put you through that test. Your resume that flex. Who got next? Who got next? SLT, ready to go. Who got next? Who got next? Living my dreams and are your goals. Who got next? Who got next? You can ask B. Jones or head coach. Who got next? Who got next? You next up, so here's my vote. Shoot. Yes, <laughs> LT Nation. What it do, fam? Welcome back to another fire episode of Sports Life Talks. You got next a platform that gives exposure to the voices of tomorrow. It is season four, the year of the Mamba. And KT and I, we are grinding hard. We are going from coast to coast, north to the south. To from the window to the wall and we are finding rising superstars in our communities who are doing big things and accomplishing big dreams and it ain't no market like Dallas market ladies and gentlemen we are at home in the DFW area for one of the dopest coaches in the game she is lifting up our community and lifting up the next generation of hoopers and more and with introducing representing Solana Texas the girls coordinator 17 years in this game the girls head coach at Lake Dallas Falcon Nation make some noise for one of your very own coach Jordan Davis! <laughs> Coach JD, how you doing today? Man, I'm good. I'm just feeling pretty hype after that intro. I don't feel like I've had something like that in a long time. Well, well Coach, I intentionally left off one of the facts off of your off of your intro, because we're gonna talk about it here in a later, but I'm gonna give y'all a hint. It's about a ring. That's right. We're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about an incredible year that happened for this head coach. But coach, if this is your first time rocking with the Sports Life Talk crew, welcome to the show. Welcome to the to the platform. I am your host, the mouth of the South B. Jones, the OG, all things Louisiana. Put your L's up, Mister Yee. Is in the building. I'm rocking alongside my brother from another mother. The other side of the logo, the choir stone. Shh. All facts, no cap. The head coach KT. Kev, how you feeling today, man? I'm feeling great, B. Jones. This is another full circle moment. We had yes, Mackenzie Bus on here who played for Coach Jordan Davis. So, B. Jones. I'm all in my fields right now, so just go ahead and take up with me, John. We're we gonna, we gonna call this show the six degrees of, uh, of, of McKenzie <laughs> Bus, man. It's like, it's like everybody we have on this joint, uh, yeah, Kenzie got to do it. they connected to him, man. But yeah. hey, you know, th this is one of those full circle moments for me because, coach, I, you know, I'm, I'm new to the area. Well, I'm not new to the area, but I, I don't know really women's basketball. I'm new to this game and. As the more and more we grow and the more we learn about some of you amazing coaches, it's like these stories. I mean, my, the, the hair on my arm is up right now as we're about to take y'all on the incredible journey. But the first part of the show to get the entertainment and excitement going, we got to get to know the coach. And we're about to play my favorite game, the moment of truth. That's right. This is our version of two truths and a lie. The rules are super simple. Coach has brought three facts that she's prepared about herself. She's going to give us those three facts and KT and I will have exactly Exactly 60 seconds to work as a team and uh, use the process of elimination and try to figure out which one of these facts is not the truth. Now, disclaimer, we not really that good at this game, but <laughs> <laughs> but we're getting better. And I don't know, Kevin, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling okay. it right now. Let's go, KT. Okay. All right, Coach Davis, give us your three facts. Okay. I went to three different high schools. I'm left-handed and I've never broke a bone in my body. All right, KT. So she's holding that phone in the picture. No, left hand. Left hand. <laughs> so maybe that, that I'm a, I'm gonna say she is left handed. Left handed ain't that yeah, ain't that far right from more. Um, never broke a bone though. That and, and she played ball. 
I, I find it hard to believe that a ball player has never broke a bone, but that could be the trap. That could be that could absolutely be the, the trap down. because most ball players have broken a bone and she ain't never broke a bone. And then three different high schools. I mean, uh, uh, there's no, I, I don't. Let's go so with the broken bone, B. Jones. If we're going to lose, let's go down just with our best shot. Let's go. <laughs> All right, coach. We're going to go with number three is the, is, is the untruth. We don't think yeah. that you, we, we think that you've broken the bone, coach. So tell us which one is the lie. I did. I did. I, I have broken a bone. So you guys. Yeah! Really oh, my goodness. <laughs> Woo! That's three in a row. row. That's three in a row. I'm telling y'all, we begging for wins. We begging yeah. for wins, and we got one today, Coach. All right. So which bone yeah. did you break, Coach? Which bone did uh, you break? I broke I broke a bone in my hand right here. And the funny thing is, it wasn't even actually when I was playing. It's when I was coaching. <laughs> I got a little upset, and I popped a chair, and it was a new chair, and it just broke that bone right there. Wow. Wow. I was young. It was, it was just a couple of years into my career. I was young and fiery and... Just, it got well, it. <laughs> well, we got the lucky lefty on the house. So, coach, this is going to be right. tough for you, coach, because uh, we need everybody out there before we start this crazy ride to take your right hand, lift it up, lift it up high, and reach over your left shoulder. Coach, grab that seatbelt and strap up. Click, oh. clack. It oh. is time to get this party started. We're about to go on a crazy ride, ladies and gentlemen. The first thing we got to do as we get the temperature right in the building and, the, and we got the radio station connected, we got to pay the bills. That's right. We got to put some gas in this vehicle so KT and I can keep these stories going and going and going. And we need your help. We are calling on Dallas Fort Worth. Now, listen, all of these other communities don't owe us nothing. But y'all, we doing this for us. This is us. This is DFW. You, we need y'all to show up and show out for us on this one. Four things you could do. Number one, hang out to the end of this episode. Keep this, this tape rolling as long as you possibly can. Number two, we need you to hit that like button as many times as Elon Musk will allow you to hit it so this show <laughs> bubbles all the way up to the top of the algorithm. And number three, we need you to share because sharing is caring. Send this to all of your people. This is going to be a crazy story. You're going to get some good stuff today. I promise you, they won't be disappointed. And last but not least, you got to become a part of Sports Life Talk family. Kevin and I have been doing this for over four years. We got over 600 shows completed. Amazing stories. We would love to have you going on because guess what? We got about another 100 shows left in 2024. And we will. We, I promise you, the names are going to be crazy. You will not. This will be the best subscription that you've signed up for in, in your career. I promise you. Coach Davis, it's Falcon Nation. Is Lake Dallas going to hold us down? Are they going to show us some love on Man, this? I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. We'll have to make sure we get we get Falcon Nation after it and, and, and all the alumni and stuff of it, too. I love to hear that. All right, here we go. Let's do it like we true to it. On the count of three, make some noise for your boys. One. Two, three, boom! Ah! Kevin, I feel like the Hulk. I feel like I'm just going to rip out this hoodie. Oh, my goodness. I love that part of the show. Thank you all so much if you did any of those three things. Coach, what is our emoji of the show? What, what emoji are you using the most right now, Coach Davis? I've been using the clap emoji a lot. Um, and I think it's, be, it's been because of the, the tournament and watching all the basketball games. And when people make good points, I just, I just got to do some, some claps real quick. So do that Magnolia clap. Yeah. Do that Magnolia. <laughs> <laughs> if you did any of those four things, or if you did the three things and you plan on hanging out, throw the clapping emoji in the in the chat. That is the emoji of the show because KT and I, we don't do fans, we don't do followers, we only do family. And if you throw that emoji in the in the car in the chat box right now, it'll let us know that you are out there, and you are holding us down. And what are we gonna tell them, KT? Thank you. Thank you. And we might even have some free t-shirts in this thing. I don't know. We gotta we gotta see how the views go. But if this show if this show get 500 views on it, we're gonna we gonna give out a free t-shirt. All right. That, that's that's my commitment. We're gonna pick somebody who do who leave that uh the, the Magnolia clap in the comments. We're gonna give out a free sports life talk t-shirt. All right, Coach JD. We got to tell hey, this is going to be a fun one. I'm telling y'all, we about to bust <laughs> this thing wide open. Coach, let's get you ready. Let's go. Welcome to the Sports Life Talk Initiation. 
All right, Coach, to initiate you into the SLT family, you got to give us your top five music artists. Okay, so I don't know if this is going to be a cop-out or not. I have two favorite artists, and I feel like the others rotate, but, and they may be, they're, they're a bit different, but my all-time number one favorite is a fella named Zach Bryan, um, and then I'm a Swifty. I'm a Taylor Swift fan. Uh, another guy is uh, Pony Bradshaw, small, like, kind of country, folkish artist. I've I got a weird range, um, but I got on my I got on my Dolly Parton shirt, you know. Uh, Beyonce redoing the Jolene lately, I love it. Um, but so that I I'll say those three, those three for sure. And I feel like the others rotate. I love Noah Kahn, Brandy Carlisle, so kind of all over. So we we I, it's definitely a strong country country vibe in this thing. But uh, you know, I, it's one country person that I'm I'm super I'm down with them like ten toes. Who is it, KT? Um, Who is it, KT? Come on, it's Morgan Wallen and Morgan Wallen, whatever his name Morgan is. Morgan Wallen. Yeah. Yeah. Are, you, are you rocking with Morgan Wallen, Coach? Oh Jake? no, absolutely not. Absolutely. Oh. If, if, if it if you if you hear it on country radio, then I probably haven't heard it much outside of Zach Brown. Oh, uh, okay. Now I, what, I like. I like. Well, what I like was number two? Guy. Yeah, what was number two again? I'm a Swifty, Taylor Swift. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Number three. You said Pony, Pony, his name, Pony, Pony Bradshaw. Pony Bradshaw. I've never heard of him, KT. You, Me, you it's like have. a character from the Outsiders or something. I know <laughs> Pony Boy. He's a, he's a. I'm pretty sure he's a Georgia boy, but uh, he's very small. I mean, the concerts that I've seen him at have been like 50 to 100 people. So like, he oh just, wow, so he growing. He's, yeah, he's growing. He's growing, but uh, but he good sound. Like it just. I like going to little concerts and seeing people that just have big booming voices. Joshua Ray Walker is another one that's really awesome. So yeah, Katie, I think you messed around and talked to her, talked to a music head. She, <laughs> she, she really know her music. Hey, she talking about ranges and all this stuff. Well, Kevin, I don't know Pony Bradshaw and Brandy Carlisle. I've heard of Brandy Carlisle. I never really listened to her music. So yeah. Katie, I'm gonna leave you with the responsibility of giving her a ranking, man. What what are you giving her, Katie? All right, we like to rank everybody's top five and how she gets okay. ten. But okay. B Jones, even though I really like Dolly Parton anyway, but I saw her on the interview. I guess her and Sylvester Stallone did a movie a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Dolly Parton is gorgeous, dog. She's yeah. beautiful. So just yeah. off the fact yeah. of that, we're gonna give her twenty for the top five. Okay. Jolene, okay. Jolene. Yeah. All right, here we go. <laughs> Okay. I, mean, I probably could have did without her in a cowboy uniform or thank you or whatever, but <laughs> yeah. I still love you, Dolly Parton. I, hey, no, I got to give Dolly some love for that 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 uh, Thanksgiving Day performance. No, that's a, yeah, 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 she did it. Well, she got okay. to be 80 some years old and she was still up there doing something. Yeah. Oh, is absolutely. it? So, mm-hmm. Hey, she was still up there moving and grooving. I was like, whoa. Yeah, absolutely. All right, yeah. Coach, so who is your favorite superhero and why? Uh, I am a big Scarlet Witch fan. Um, I th- right, WandaVision. Um, I got to give her one more, KT. That's our first Scarlet Witch in a long time. I, yeah, I can't. Yeah, yeah. Man, I think if you take, and now I know she got a little evil in her, but like her powers and everything, man, she's. You, you she's know good. what, though? We, we we view Wanda, Wanda caught a bad deal, the Scarlet Witch, because yeah. she's only a bad guy because of emotional reasons. She's not a bad person at heart. It's right. that the, her situation kind of, it's one of those things with situationally yeah. you, you you become the bad guy to try to take care of, you know, to do the good thing. So Yeah, because she wanted to keep her family. Wanted to keep she wanted kids, to get, that's know? right. So like that's, you know, you're trying to do what you can to keep your family and friends close. And, that's it. But and then, you know, but yeah, she, I'm, I, I, I'm a Scarlet Witch fan. Y'all being nice. Y'all know her dad, Magneto. They evil. So uh, I get what y'all trying to say. <laughs> All right. So we asked the superhero question because we consider coaches superheroes. So with that said, superheroes have their own theme song. So what would your theme music be? <sighs> okay. Um, man, I, I had it in my head and then I lost it because I was like, I don't know if I would. Uh, I would say something by Zach Bryan. And if I had to, if I had to, oh, man. Hmm. I don't know, cause I'm just such a I, I like sad music, so I feel like it's hard for me to have a theme song because I'm not a sad person. <laughs> oh, but uh, dang, 
I might have to come back to that one because I feel like I had it, I lost it, and my reasoning is 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 beyond me right now. I will right, we'll let you make it, Coach. We'll okay, let you. Make okay, it. We'll okay, let you make it. okay. Okay. All right. So, what is something that basketball has taught you that you can use when you're not on the court? Um, I think a lot of uh, perseverance, uh, perseverance, accountability. Um, one of the biggest things that we try to preach to our kids accountability, and so you know, if I'm going to hold them accountable, I'm going to make sure I hold myself accountable and and being a good citizen, being a good human, being a good uh, family member, friend, and and just trying to do right. Uh, by people and and have kindness and and love each other and you know that stuff can can take you a long way on the court and it can take you even further in life. All right, Cole. So this is probably the most important question to be Jones and I because we love to eat. Okay. So before one of your games, <laughs> what is that one food spot you're going to recommend and what is your go to meal there? Okay, I'm going to tell you to go to NJ's Taqueria. It's a little food truck stand about half a mile from the high school um, and just get the, the tacos, uh, carne asada, street tacos. Um, and if you come on a Tuesday, it's Taco Tuesday and you get yourself a little special price. So NJ's Taqueria. And they, and they play on Tuesdays too, B, right? so that's perfect. Right, right. We get a home I'm game on uh, Tuesdays. Ain't nothing like getting my belly full of some tacos and then going to watch some good <laughs> basketball. So, uh, right. NJ, you said MJ's or NJ's? In, in, in. NJ's, in, holla at us. Holla at us, yeah. NJ's. We need to reserve a table for three. <laughs> we'll, we'll see them in October, that's for sure. It's it's a food truck, so you're going to have to. Yeah, no, hey, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll put a blanket out there on the grass. Yeah, we'll put a blanket on the grass. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to sit back in the car. It's We're going to sit back in the car, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, so stay tuned as we shift gears to our next segment, featuring a remarkable leader in the realm of high school basketball. We're thrilled to welcome Jordan Davis, the head coach and athletic coordinator at Lake Dallas High School, to share her insights and experiences. A true standout, Jordan's journey includes her time as a pivotal member of Baylor's 2005 National Championship team, where she honed her skills and passion for the game. With a proven track record of success at various coaching stops, her expertise and dedication continue to shape the future of the sport. Join us as we delve into her remarkable, remarkable career and invaluable lessons she's learned along the way. So, B. Jones, excuse me, B. Jones, go ahead and introduce our newest play cousin, Coach Jordan Davis, to the nation. Coach Jordan Davis, welcome to the family. Welcome to the show. Uh, like I got told y'all at the beginning, what I say, I, we really mean. I'm super excited about having our local coaches on. When when we came up with that idea, we wanted to make sure we, we put the triple D on our back and show some love. We didn't realize that I'm talking about some incredible stories are right here in our very own backyard. And today we're about to talk to one of those incredible stories. So Coach Davis, let's take them back to the beginning, Coach. Three high yeah. schools. Let's take them <laughs> back before the three high schools and uh, let's tell them your story. Coach, when did you start playing basketball and when did you fall in love with the game? Oh, man. I started playing when I was about five years old. I uh, just started playing up uh, – just little rec leagues and um, just really, really kind of enjoyed it. And I think one of the things that was really cool is that my parents gave me space to enjoy it and just playing in, in rec leagues and things. Um, I really remember uh, I was playing in Gainesville at the Cook County Youth Center and um, first kind of it might, it might have been second grade and just whipping up on kids and, and the and boys and everybody. And there were, you know, like just everybody in the gyms kind of started cheering and watching like over the year. And so I just really enjoyed it then and um, still played kind of rec. And uh, I really feel like I started to really fall in love with it about my, my seventh grade year. Um, started, I, I played on a travel team with some people and, um, kind of a, a cool story of how I got started and how I really started like just training for a division one scholarship was um, I was in the car, I was in the truck with my dad, my brother and sister. And uh, I, I told my dad that I wanted to go to the University of Texas. And he said, well, if you're going to go to the University of Texas, you're going to have to <laughs> get your way paid for because this education, <laughs> you know, my, my mom and dad are teachers and coaches and so that wasn't going to get done so anyways I said well okay I'm, I want to work hard to play basketball and so 
we wrote up a uh, a contract essentially that said that you know if I made it and got a Division One scholarship, that my dad would buy me a burnt orange Mustang, and uh, and that that you know that we would work, and I would agree to put in all the work and everything. And by that time, I had developed a love and a passion for it. So then, when the hard work and and all that comes with it, you know, I was really prepared and really ready to do that. So we signed the contract. My brother and sister signed it as witnesses, and and then so we really started getting after it. Um, and that's just I, I kind of I had that space to to love it and develop the passion, and then was like, okay, like let's go do this. Um, and I had two state runner ups when I was in high school at Valley View, and then. Um, uh, we were regional finalists when I was at Salina my senior year, but uh, just I, I think it developed kind of it, it, in my middle school years, you know. What 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 was the name of that burnt orange Mustang that you got, Cody? What what did you name it? Everybody got a name. When they go. uh, listen, I didn't end up <laughs> I didn't end up getting the burnt orange Mustang since I didn't end up going to Texas, so I got a. Oh, that, that was a, he finagled the contract. That's, That's cold. Well, black. I, I got a Mercury Cougar. They don't even make those anymore. You know? No, so I, I, that was a dope car. Though. I used to like the I, Mercury Cougar. I know. I had a little Mercury Cougar. His name was Coog. And so <laughs> that was it. <laughs> but I, I, I did. But that's a. Uh, but he did. But he did go through on his word. He did get me a. Yeah, he, he got you a whip. He got you a yeah, whip. It just yeah. it wasn't burn on Mustang. All right? We ain't gonna text. We ain't getting that but burn I'm on. Okay with that. I'm okay with that now. <laughs> but coach, it, you know when we talk about Baylor, like these kids nowadays kind of get Baylor, but I'm talking about Baylor over the last 20 years. In my opinion, has been a top 10 program, especially when it comes to women's basketball. Like Baylor, it, that's not no cheap thrill. I know University of Texas is big brother here in Texas, but right, right. let's just be real. When it comes to women's basketball, I, I dare to say Baylor's been more successful than Texas over the last 20 years, uh, 20 to 25 years. And I could be a little wrong with that. I'm pretty sure some it's, it'll be a good, healthy, spirited debate. <laughs> but, 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 but with that being said, Coach, it, it couldn't have been easy to get to the University of Baylor. I mean, I, I mean, you, you must have been raising hell at Valley View. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we, we, I, I did. You know, it was a, it was a small school, but... Uh, I played on a good AU team with a good organization. It was Team Texas um, and just really basically got after it. I mean, I was in the gym every day with my dad, uh, with, you know, siblings or my mom sometimes. And we'd just go get shots up and work on skills. And, you know, a lot of times people say like, yeah, you gave up a lot to to be in the gym and to do those kind of things. And, and we did, you know, but um, I, it was kind of neat. One one time, Jody Conrad flew out to uh, a little small school that we were playing at, Era, to come watch me play, and so that was kind of fun. Um, you know, uh, ultimately, I, I didn't end up going to to Texas, but and I did go to Baylor. I think um, I was in Coach Mulkey's first recruiting class. That's what I was just about to say. That that, that yeah. was Mulkey just got started. Yeah, she just got started. So I was in I was in her first recruiting class. Um, and so I was there for her second year and uh, I tell you what, like it's, um, you know, what, what you go from being the best on the team to you go to being there's like 10 other people like you, you know, you're <laughs> like, dang, like, this is going to be tough. Um, but, you know, I, I think that that all that hard work and, and just getting to that and getting a, a private school uh, education paid for. Um, is something that, you know, I never would have been able to afford or do without a scholarship and without all the hard work. And, um, you know, I can look back now and, and say with a Big 12 tournament championship, a Big 12 regular season championship and a national championship that I wouldn't trade any of it for the world, you know. Um, We're going to get into that championship in a second, Cody. <laughs> I, 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 can't, I, I can't just let that scathe by because she hit okay. y'all with the, yeah, I was part of Kim Mulkey recruiting class, first recruit class. Like, like that ain't nothing. That, like, that's not a big thing. Coach, that is huge. Yeah. Like, Kim Mulkey was not that. Like, right now, Kim Mulkey's on the cover of everything. Everybody in America know Kim Mulkey, mm -hmm. but in 2005, 2004, you know, 2001, when you signed mm -hmm. on, like she wasn't like Kim Mulkey now, you know what I mean? We we knew of right. her. We knew, especially right. I'm from Louisiana, so everybody in Louisiana yeah. knew Kim Mulkey because mm -hmm. she had led our lady Texas to a national title uh, right. in an upset fashion. But the world didn't know about Kim Mulkey. So right. when you found out about Kim Mulkey, what what attracted you to her? Like, what, what was that? What 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 brought you two together? Well, 
I, I, the biggest thing was belief in her. Um, you know, like you, you get recruited, people come into your house, you talk to people, you know, it was a lot different than we just didn't carry around cell phones and be able to text and do all that real easy. But so when you, when you met someone and you talked to them, there was really, you know, something there that like, I talked to other coaches been recruited by other programs and talked to a lot of different people. But I'm telling you, like when coach Mulkey told me that she was going to build a program and she was going to build a national powerhouse. And she was like, you, you know, I want you to come be a part of it. Um, and you can be a part of something special. And if not, you know, that's okay. But she's like, we're going to do stuff. We're going to do big things at Baylor. And, you know, um, and she's not wrong. <laughs> so, but, uh, you just believed in her. So, so when did it become evident? When did it become crystal clear? Like, okay, she was serious. We are legitimately a problem. Because I, I know you went there on faith, right? You went right. there on hope. Yeah. You went there yeah. on, on promise. You went there on, on, on just just the just the, 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 the thought process that, hey, I'm going to take a chance on this woman because she's taking a chance on me. But right. when did you look around that locker room or on that bus ride and you say, we, we, we legit. We some certified yeah. dogs. Man, I think it was... Um, it was my, so I ended up having a red shirt a year, a long story short, I got, I got really sick. I had pulmonary emboli. Like I really, I almost died. The doctors told me I was lucky to be alive. So I had to sit out a year, but the year that I sat out was the year that we lost to Tennessee in the sweet 16 on like kind of a last second, um, kind of play. Like we had ran a play, turned it over. Tennessee goes to get a shot and like the buzzer goes off and stuff, but they ended up calling a foul on us. Tennessee got to shoot two free throws. Pat Summit was still coaching. And so, um, so they beat us. And I think that like that team, we're like, man, we're like, this, this sucks, you know, like this sucks. And um, that, that summer we started training. And I think like we started training harder than we ever had before because we didn't want to experience that again. And so, um, you know, I was definitely a role player. I, I learned pretty quick that um, my skill set was I was going to, I needed to be a try, knock down three, three point shooter when we needed it, give the ball to the people that were open and try my best to play defense on a lot of these girls that were bigger, faster, stronger than me. So I became a role player and I was like, look, if I'm gonna be on the bench, I'm gonna be the best damn cheerleader there is over here. And I'm going to sit, I'm going to sit in the closest I can to coach Mulkey and, and learn and observe as much as I can. And so throughout that year, when I, you know, when I was coming back and when we were coming back, like everybody was just working so hard and you could kind of see it. Like we just developed this great team chemistry. And I think that was one of the biggest things that like really helped propel us. And, and, you know, um, we started off the season getting our butts kicked by LSU on national <laughs> television. And uh, it was funny because, you know, then that we end up playing them in the, in the semifinals that year. And I know there's been articles and stuff written about it, but I think we get down by like 15 or so in the first half. And uh, we're sitting, you know, I'm over on the sideline. We're doing everything we can. <clears throat> and LSU scores a bucket and we're just like, oh man, we're about to get our asses embarrassed on national television again, you know? And uh, Coach Mulkey calls a timeout. And after that timeout, she lit into us and was like, hey, like, we've done this before and came back. Like, we're going to do it again, but you got to do it right now. And so we kind of kicked it in. And, um, uh, like, it just – it changed. We ended up beating them. And, and it was just like this belief in each other. You know, you you go through the ringer. We didn't, we didn't get all the cool glitzy glamour stuff, you know, that we have now. We were in McDavid – sports bras and spandex and getting our <laughs> getting our warm-ups tailored by a sweet local woman in town who would just fix our warm-ups for us if they were too long but so like we didn't we weren't spoiled by any means and we just we worked for everything that we had and and we worked together and I think that was one of the biggest things and so you know we were the uh one of the I know for a long time it might have changed. We were one of the only teams to be a number two seed to beat three number one seeds on the way to a national championship. And wow. we did that. Yeah. We beat North Carolina, uh, then we beat LSU, and then we beat Michigan State in the championship. And so I think as we got through the regular season, uh, you know, we're like, wow, we can do this. And then you we win the tournament and you're like, okay, like, wow, we're we're not that bad. And then you know, yeah. kind of get on that run into the tournament and Man, it was just magical things. 
They ain't know they was gonna come get that. That camera that was off the chain. That story right there. <laughs> hey, uh, real quick, it was a young lady out of Shreveport. Uh, she mm-hmm. she went to Evangel Christian Academy. Her name was Sonya. Was she on that team with you? Sophia Young. Sophia Young. Oh yeah, my goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sophia yeah, Young yeah, yeah. was a dog. I, I I went to Evangel Christian Academy. Yeah. So, okay. so okay, hey, yeah. hey, Sophia was a she was that girl back in Shreveport, yeah. huh? And Elena Beard, the two of the best battle players, then came out of Shreveport, and she was on that championship yeah. team as well, right? She was. She was on that championship team. She was, I think, uh, one of our, I can't remember if she was the only All-American we had or if we had somebody else. But I know that, like, I mean, she was just, she became so smooth, like, just, like, I, I it, it's just, it was so fun to watch, you know, and you're like, I'm at, like, if I was on the court with her, I'm like, okay, if she's open, I better make sure I get her the ball. And then I'll yeah. just wait in the corner in case you get a double team. But yeah, so Sophia was just so smooth and a, and a hard worker, and you know she's back at Baylor now yep. um, as a coach and everything. And so uh, there was a group of us that we used to go watch her play a lot for the Silver Stars back when she was in San Antonio. And so, yeah, that was Sophia Young, Stephanie Blackman, uh, Abiola Wabara, Chelsea Whitaker, my best friend in the entire world at Pass, Shamika Scott. Um, but yeah, we we had a we had a nice squad. Dang, Coach, I, I, I hate we took all the time. Coach, we got to get you to come back again, but we're we going to get you to talk a little Lake Dallas. Uh, okay, so, tell us a little bit about the Lake Dallas program. What is the culture? And shout out to you because we've had a lot of female coaches on this thing. I don't think we've ever had a girls athletic coordinator. I don't think yeah. – I think you might be the first one that's been like – you know, most of the time it's the, the guys, right? It's yeah, the, yeah. The, uh, yeah. the the gentlemen who run the football programs are the one right. that run all the different athletic departments. So I thought right. that was really cool as we dug into your – background to learn that but but tell us a little bit about what's cracking over there at lake dallas coach man i tell you what we're building something special at lake dallas um you know i was at salina i went to marcus uh salina was 4a when i was there marcus was 6a and i feel like lake dallas is kind of nestled right in the middle of that um we're pretty landlocked we've got a lake but one of my favorite things about it is that everybody that rolls through that lake city is there a falcon Um, We've got one high school, we've got one middle school, we've got three elementaries. um, And, you know, whenever, whenever I took the job, it's funny because my kids like Mackenzie Buss and them like to tell me that the job came open and I, I, I told the paper and I didn't really mean to. Sometimes I say stuff without thinking and they were like, well, what, you know, why didn't you go for the job the first time it came around? And I was like, well, I saw it. And I was like, no, thanks. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyways, it opened back up a few days later, and I was like, man, maybe this is a sign. And, um, you know, I really enjoy the administration, the kids. And there was a special group, uh, Mackenzie Buss's group, uh, when she was a sophomore. Um, her sophomore year, you know, she had a really good class Mackenzie Buss, Georgia Elliott, Bailey Broughton, Allie Buchanan. My first year there, there were two other really good players, Dorian Norris, who's at AM Commerce, um, Josephine Elliott. And uh, there was just like they just wanted to win and they wanted to work hard. Um, they could they could take coaching and criticism. Um, I, I like to tell and joke with people that, you know, they're like, well, what did you learn from Coach Mulkey? And I'm like, well, I learned a lot that I could do, but I sure learned a heck of a lot I can't do. <laughs> but so like. I think they, you know, they wanted to be coached. They wanted to win and they just worked hard. And and that's kind of what we were able to do. Um, like my staff and I was able to set that bar of this is what it takes to get here. Um, we're always going to work hard. We're always going to hold each other accountable. And each year, you know, we're going to strive to get to this bar. Like I'm not based on our, you know, talent. The, the, the bar isn't coming down. We're still going to work hard. We're still going to get in the gym. We're still going to do things the right way. Um, and, and that's something that, you know, these kids and the parents and the community have like have allowed us to do as a staff and myself. And it just makes it really special. And, and one thing about Lake Dallas is I can get down to the middle school like that and help them go run a practice and be there with seventh and eighth grade. And, and that being able to do that is huge as well. Um, and so it's a good spot, man. It's a good spot. And, you know, everywhere's getting a little bigger and we're just kind of staying the same. And and I think that's really good for us. Well, well if you are interested in learning more about Mackenzie Bus, I know we dropped that name probably about six, <laughs> seven times now. Y'all can go yeah, listen to her yeah. full episode in our archives. Just type in Mackenzie Bus. That's with two S's at the end. But coach, mm-hmm. I got to ask you, because you're from the area. 
You played in the mm-hmm. area. You played college in the area. Well, I guess you're a little bit on the outside of the area, but <laughs> you you yeah. you know the DFW area like the back of your hand. I personally mm-hmm. feel like this is the most difficult, probably the most talent rich, uh, amateur athletic city in the country. I, I just I'm standing on Dallas. My question to you is, how difficult is it for you to navigate a five A schedule when you got to play the Timberviews and the Liberties yeah. and yeah. And now, I know you said before the show y'all are moving down the classification, but still, it's, it don't get still. no easier. <laughs> you know, you still, right, you still right, got to get that right. work from La Vega and some of these other right. powerhouses, Coach. Yeah. How, how difficult yeah. is, is it to manage the, the the schedules out here in the DFW community? Yeah, yeah, it's 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 tough, man. Um, our, the DFW community has some of the best basketball, like you said. Um, a lot of the talent um, and and it's so, to me, it's spread out. You know, it's, you got your man's, your Mansfield, you got your, uh, right in Dallas, you've got your suburbs of Dallas, you got your East, um, you know, like kind of Dallas and, and schools and programs and stuff there. And so, you know, you got your Frisco with 38 high schools that they're all spread out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like to joke, I like to joke with my friends about Frisco, but, um, hey, they anyway. get ridiculous with it. I, I yeah. lived in Frisco and when I lived there, we had like six to eight. And then all of a sudden I checked back in this year. I think it's like 13 Frisco schools now for real. It's, yeah, it's a yeah, lot. We're, yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's talent everywhere. We fought and claw and worked our tails off to get to the playoffs this year to, to finish fourth. And, and we got Mansfield Timberview in the first round, you know, but we, I, I'll tell you what, our kids stepped up this year too. And we, we beat them in the first quarter and uh, that's, that's all we need to hear about it was that we beat them in the first <laughs> quarter. But uh, <laughs> I say I blacked out after that, but, uh, but anyways, it, it, it's, it's tough, man. Everywhere you go. Um, I got a lot of good friends and, and people that I trust and, and that I love to coach and against. And it's funny because my kids will be like, coach, like, I'm tired of playing your friends like they're too good. <laughs> and, uh, you know, because we're they're in the Metroplex and they're good people. Yep. And I know they're good, good run programs. And so it makes it tough, you know, and um, it, it's just it's competitive, but it's a good competitive, you know, like yep. it makes your kids get to that bar. Like I was saying, and like, hey, if you want to do this, you have to meet me here. I'm not bringing it down for you. So. Well, and, and, and look at this. I mean, we get we get the final fours here. We get probably eight or nine AAU tournaments. I'm talking about big, big AAU tournaments yeah. come through the city because we're so talent rich and, and everybody yeah. want to. You got to match. You got to match what we're doing down in the DFW. But yeah. right now you got to match. You got to match what we doing. I, I think uh, I think I'm gonna win this one, y'all. <laughs> Coach Jordan Davis, welcome. To the championship mm-hmm. rounds. This is the part okay. of the show with KTNI. We're gonna do a little one-on-one, and you are now officially calling all the shots. Okay. Uh, the rules are super simple. This is our version of Would You Rather. All right, coach. So both KTNI and True Championship Round format. We're gonna go three rounds, okay? And each okay. one of these rounds, we're gonna give you an option. Uh, whichever one of those options you select, the host gets a point. First host to get two points of the best out of three will win this episode's game. KT is the okay. defending champion. So Kev, kick it off. All right, Coach, you know, you're at the high school, and we know there are kids out there that can't get right. But there is one that you didn't give up on. And because of you, they make it to the Basketball Hall of Fame. And then their speech tells you they wouldn't be there without your love and guidance. Or or you could could take Lake Dallas, or you could pick any school you want in the DFW Metroplex. But you are about to go on a 30-year run, Coach. I'm talking about this team is going to be in the conversation for, for, for not just cities, for city and district and state titles, but you're going to have a national powerhouse. I'm talking about competing against the Etiwandas, the Lou Highs, and the Mont Verdes. And, uh, mm-hmm. and so this program is going to be all of that, and you will retire as the most winningest coach at that program with your name on the floor. I think I'm gonna go with Kevin. I think I'm gonna have. I, I want a kid. I, I want a kid to tell me that 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 I was there to be able to help them. Uh, championships are good. I got one of the highest ones in a national championship. But you know, I think That's what I was, coach. I you, you know, if you can't substitute that championship, coach, <laughs> you gonna get these kids. A, you gonna get the kids a lifetime experience. Oh man. Oh, I, I, <sighs> All right, round two. Let's go, Kevin. Would you rather host a traveling food show where you get to explore delicious dishes from around the world 
Uh, for ESPNW, where you get to interview college coaches and high school coaches and pick their brains while eating at some of the best places in the world, or oh, I got a film crew pulling up to Lake Dallas on Monday. We're gonna film you, the coaching staff, all of the players. We're gonna showcase this entire season of 24, 25 version of this Lake Dallas team. And we're gonna show how y'all have built this thing from the inside out, in the classroom, in the locker room, on the bus trips, at the practices. It is going to be a crazy show. And we're gonna call it, uh, we're gonna call it Welcome to the Lake. Ooh, okay. Mm. On, on, hey. on Netflix. Hey, listen, I'm going to have to go with B. Jones on that one. I like, give me the exposure. I'm a real picky eater, so give me... <laughs> <laughs> I might like, get scared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I got a one. I got one. I got one. I'm super excited because now y'all know what that means. We got to take it to round three, which is overtime. It is tied one to one, and the last round will decide the winner of this show. But here's the catch. KT and I are super sneakerheads. If you're a sneakerhead, come hang out with us Wednesday nights at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. We go live with other hosts of Sports Life Talk, and I promise you it's a fun ride. But I do a segment called The Drop, in which we talk about all of these sneakers. So before the show, Kevin and I picked a, a pair of sneakers out of our collection that we think represents Ooh. you, okay, Coach Davis? Okay, so we, we don't, okay. I, I don't know. I don't know what Kevin has. Kevin don't know what I'm what I'm going to showcase. But on the count of three, we're going to get you to say, "Hold that sneaker." Whichever okay. one of these shoes you select, which you like the best, that should, that host will win this episode. So, uh, okay. so think okay. long and hard about it. All right, Coach, you ready Let's for do this? It. Let's do it. Yeah. All right, three, two, one. Hold that sneaker. Oh, 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 man, man. I got to tell you, give me mouth of the South with the green and the Baylor yellow. And yeah. 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 Hey, I went Baylor, KT. I, threw, I, I, was, I, was about to pull, I was about to go Lake Dallas. I said, but I went Lake Dallas on McKenzie's show. I said, you know, I'm going Baylor. I said, Sophia Young is one of my you favorites. Go. Let's go! M-O-T-S! Man, it feel good. Coach, you a champion. I'm a champion. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I love it. I love this game. I love this show. Yeah. Hey, Coach, is there a Taco Bell? <laughs> NJ's. Uh, yeah, We're going to NJ's. No, I can't. Yeah, yeah. Y'all going to NJ's. I'm going to Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> we go to NJ's all day. All right, Coach Davis, we got to get you back again. This has been too much fun. And, uh, you know, we still got a lot of stuff we got to talk about because uh, Lake Dallas is on the come up for certain. And we're super excited about seeing you guys. But that's what we're about. We're about talking about the positivity of the future, Coach. The title yeah. of the show is even titled You Got Next. So what's up next for you, Coach? What's on doc for you? What are you most excited about in the career and next phase for Jordan Davis? Man, I'm, I'm excited about next year with these kids. First and foremost, you know, I, I think that's uh, I got a group that's working really hard right now and I'm excited for that. Uh, for me in the future, I'm currently getting my master's. Uh, I'm the girls athletic coordinator, like you said. I would like to eventually uh, be an athletic director of some sort uh, just to kind of give back a lot. Like I, I've really enjoyed mentoring kids and I would, you know, like the opportunity to mentor adults uh as well and so i i think um you know i've had a passion for basketball for a long time and i'm gonna keep going with it for a long time but uh eventually down the road i'd like to be an athletic director um at an isd somewhere all right so do you have any shout outs you want to give yeah man i've got a shout out uh my my friends my family um my family's been super supportive of, of me throughout my whole entire career um, uh, my administration at Lake Dallas, my fellow coaching staff, they're awesome. Uh, but a big thing for me is my friends, my, my, my community and my family that I've built through the coaching world and some of my best buds, Rochelle Vaughn, Stephanie Shaw, Beth Talent, uh, Val Wooten. Those are some of my people, um, that I just, I love talking hoops and things with and, uh, the Pounceys as well, you know, Mike ITL and Lindsay Pouncey. Those are my people, and uh, just those are the ones that I would like to, to say thank you and for pushing me and help making me a better person. 
Also, my last quick shout out. I don't know if I'm going to get it. My uh, best friend, Shamika Scott, passed. Oh, I can't get it in the camera. She passed away from cancer uh, several years ago, but that's been my motivation to try to be the best human that I can be is to somebody that she would be proud of. So those, those are my shout outs. Hey, Kevin, what about all of you got next alone? Stephanie, yeah, shout out. Hey. No, but so, hey, we rock with some of them coaches. So yeah. That's yeah. good. That's all. Rochelle Vaughn. Works. Well, Coach Vaughn is, is one of my favorites. So, yeah. I love it took us forever to get her on the show. And when she finally did it. I know. Yeah. She dope. She's super she, dope. She's good people. She's she's actually lives right up the road from me. So, I'm trying to make her go watch the game with the, uh, me somewhere. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. So, this is a part of the show where you get a chance to call the person that you think should have next tell them hey i okay. had a chance to rock with Reed jones and kt i told them my story why don't you do the same thing with that said coach who you calling out who should have next i'm gonna call out uh, maybe somebody a little bit out of left field since a lot of my buddies are taken but i'm gonna call out a new bud of mine his name is chance westmoreland and he's the uh, girls basketball coach and assistant ad at argyle high school Wow. All right, Coach Wes yeah. Borland, you are yeah. on the clock. Let the world know that you are up next. Coach Davis just punched your ticket. <laughs> you got a seat at the table, my guy. We can't wait to get you on the show to tell your incredible story. Hopefully, we can get you on in two, the year to Mamba because it's, it's Mamba's only this year. We, buy, we, we, we got Venom this year. All right, but Coach Jordan Davis, JD, national <laughs> champion, you got Next, you are an incredible coach. We didn't even scratch the surface at some of the some of the organizations, the 2014 our most outstanding coach. Coach, your journey has been incredible. Your energy is contagious. It's infectious. You are charismatic. You are the vibe, coach. You are the truth. You are elite. You are extraordinary and elite. You deserve a <laughs> oh my God, back at it again. Hey, hey, I love this hey. show. I'm trying to tell y'all, man, either you win with us or you watch us win. We going places and we can't do it without y'all. Thank y'all for watching another fire episode of Sports Life Talks. You got next. We appreciate for all of y'all. Either you, either you watched the first half and came back and finished it or you watched it all the way through. We appreciate all the love and support. We can't do this without you this mission is so much bigger than us but it starts right here let's light the flame in dallas fort worth and spread the amazing stories of these women's basketball coaches and players the world needs these stories and we need you to help us to share these stories so make sure you hit that subscribe button hit that like button and share 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 let's 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 let this let's let's make this show catch fire let's let's go let's take this thing all the way up to the mountaintop and if you want to be on the show if you got a story to tell and, you know, we, we, we talk to a lot of dope coaches, but we do players, we do media. It don't matter. If you got a story that needs to be heard, hit us up, SLT. You got next.com. It's right there on the screen. If you're watching this on YouTube, it's SLT. You got next.com. Click on the nominate tab and tell us a little bit about yourself and why you got next. KT will reach out to you and set you up an audition to be on the show. And lastly, for all of my podcast junkies out there like myself, if you like riding the car or if you like sitting in the kitchen and cooking, and listen to inspiration and positivity you can take this show as well as over 550 other you got next shows and listen to the shows in the audio format wherever you download your podcast and keep the positivity rolling with the smooth sounds of the mouth of the south b jones and the velvet tones of the hell coach kt kev hey i, I want this other soul fam hey, no, I, I, we got the moment of truth <laughs> I, I can't think of a better way, you know. Shout out to Sophia Young. That's all I got to say, Kevin. Let's get out of here, man. <laughs> Is there a Taco Bueno near the near your school? I'm. No, I don't know about no, NJ's B Jones. I can't trust her taste. I can't do it. <laughs> but coach, no, seriously, thank you so much for rocking with us. Whatever you need from us, please let us know, and we got your back. Thank you guys for doing what you're doing. It's awesome. Nah, we appreciate you, Coach. You got you got to show you got to show us that J though, Coach, because they they don't think you can hoop, Coach. They don't think you got. They don't think you was a bucket, Coach. There it is, Swish. <laughs> Thank y'all for watching another fire Thank episode you. of Sports Life Talks. You got next. We appreciate you. Listen, stay safe, be blessed, respect each other, and love one another because together we are better. And keep dreaming big, y'all, because you never know your story may be the next one featured on Sports Life Talks. You got next yeet.
I knew you had next, cause you always working, you always grinding, you're in your bag, cause you're always working, like, in due time, I just, I knew you got next. You did it, huh? Crack the code. You got next, you smashing goals. You want next, you need exposure. Well, sports like talk out the baddest, show like the baddest. Hut in the room, podcast and tuning too, just for you to talk your shit. Talk your mushroom, you want what you eat and you should consume. Sports like talk from the late night to the afternoon, then rest repeat. Hit the like, leave a comment, or subscribe so you don't miss a beat. You got next, it's a small taste of a winning meal from a chef type of celebrity. What's up next is you, at least you better be. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sports life talking this.